All right, hello everybody. Uh, this is Miss Chandler and I am just going to read One Giant Leap by Robert Burley and the paintings are by Mike Wimmer. This is a historical account of the first moon landing. Remember that you can watch this video and use this book for your homework tonight. July 20th, 1969, 70 miles up, the two spaceships, Eagle and Columbia, separate. They orbit in sight of each other one last time. Then the Eagle begins to descend to where no human has ever been, to the moon. The Eagle is like a gold speckled bug falling out of the sky its odd-shaped body plastered with many boxes, its outer walls thinner than human skin. The spacecraft's spindly legs poke out as it rides on its back. At 8,000 feet, it tilts and straightens, breaks its descent, slows, drifts down through space. The astronauts look out at last. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, they stand upright before two small windows, their eyes widen. Look rushing up toward them, the moon, it is gray, it is brown, it is blue-edged. Its billion-year-old landscape is cracked and scarred, its surface gouged and cratered and pitted with tiny holes, like a battlefield from some ancient war. The radio voice crackles from Earth 240,000 miles away. Eagle, Houston, you are go for landing. Armstrong tenses forward, feeling the seconds tick, aware that the fuel is sinking towards zero. Timing is everything. His gaze darts between nearby rows of, and of switches and the strange world below. The dark ridges rise like forbidding walls. Spidery shadows creep in the rising sunlight. Boulders loom up as big as cars. He glances again at the flashing dial, fuel running short. Where can he land? Eagle, 90 seconds of descent fuel left. Armstrong hears the warning. Now, all he has ever learned is focused on this. Nothing matters but this exact moment. Aldrin's non-stop voice calls out altitude numbers. 40 feet, 35, 30. Down they move, down and down. Fast enough to conserve precious fuel. Slow enough to land somewhere safely, he hopes. The eagle dips, hovers, zigs, zags, dances over its own dark shadow. The seconds tick towards eternity. Time stops. Clouds of moon dust swirl like blackening fog. An almost terrifying blindness. And then, with only the very slightest bump, the small craft touches down. Whew! The eagle has landed. High overhead, Michael Collins listens but cannot see. They made it. They made it. The Columbia orbits and waits. Collins has waited a lifetime for this. Yet for him, the waiting is not over. In Houston, on Earth, hundreds in the control room break into wild cheers. The first humans on the moon. But in this other place, it is very quiet. It is lunar morning on the sea of tranquility. Armstrong lets out another deep breath and turns. He raises his gloved hand and meets Aldrin's gloved hand halfway. We did it. We're here. Exploration time. Armstrong and Aldrin add still more to their spacesuits. There are new overshoes and heavier gloves, a visored helmet to protect against sunlight, and an oxygen-filled backpack thick as a sofa pillow. They pause to gaze out an endless, mysterious wasteland whose distant hills are as sharply outlined as nearby stones. No water, no wind, no sound, no life at all. Unbelievable. A hatch opens. Armstrong on all fours crawls through its small space. He moves awkwardly in his moon cocoon. Outside on the narrow porch where a ladder is attached to one landing leg, he climbs to the bottom rung and stops. A TV camera placed on the eagle's hatchway is pointed down. Armstrong knows that back on Earth, hundreds of millions of people are watching. He jumps to the landing's legs, round footbound, foot pad. He holds on. He pauses. He points his foot and steps off. The surface is a f as fine as powdered charcoal. The treads of his boot leave a perfectly crisp print in the dust. On the weatherless moon, it will last for millions of years. His voice sounds staticky and far away. That's one small step for man one giant leap for mankind. In orbit, Michael Collins listens and waits. Now it is Buzz Aldrin's turn. He climbs down, feeling full of goose pimples. Together, the astronauts go moonwalking. Flexing their toes and ankles, they walk stiffly, as if navigating inside a rigid balloon. But moving about is easier than they expected. They twirl like slow motion tiptoe dancers. They jog, they kangaroo hop, like two boys bouncing on a trampoline. Because of the moon's lesser gravity, they feel light as air. 
Armstrong texts the time. They must hurry. They have just two hours on this strange and beautiful world. They use long metal tongs to collect rocks. Some are slippery with dust. Some sparkle. Some look tan or even purple. The rocks go into two large boxes that scientists will open back on Earth. Then they try to plant the American flag, but underneath its surface, dust, the moon, is like steel. They jab the pole into the hard crust. They twist and turn, leaning with all their might. At last, they are able to balance the staff, just barely. A rod across the top keeps the flag unfurled. Then, click, Armstrong takes a picture of Aldrin saluting the flag. A surprise call comes from the president. For a priceless moment, all the people on this earth are truly one. A tightness rises in the throats of the astronauts. They feel part of something so much larger than themselves. Yet soon as it is over, they are inside again. This world is not theirs, not their own. Streaks of dirt cover their spacesuits. The smell of the moon dust hits them as they remove their helmets. Like spent cap pistols, they tell each other. They have been awake for 18 hours straight, but it feels like much more. Can they sleep now? Maybe. It is shivery cold in the cramped eagle. Aldrin curls up on the floor. Armstrong lies in a hammock stretched across the room, exhausted. He looks up. Above him, there is an unshuttered porthole. The earth stares down. A big blue eyeball, he thinks. He blinks back at the bright blue eye, then turns and tries to sleep. July 21st. Unease. Uncertainty. This is the part they are most afraid of. This is the place where things can go terribly wrong. Armstrong and Aldrin stand quietly in the tiny cockpit. Lift off in one minute. Away from here, maybe. The eagle will split into two parts. The upper half must fly up. The lower will stay on the moon, a permanent monument. Will the engine light? Will it keep on burning? They try to ease their worries, but there is no escape from this. No backing up, no doing it again, no second try. They know only one thing, failure means death. The second hand winds down, now or never. Aldrin's voice cuts into the awful stillness. Three, two, one. Ascent. Make a prediction. Are they going to make it back to Earth? Let's find out. At first, a frightening pause. What's happening? Then bang, whoosh, zoom. It feels as if the floor is coming up at them. The eagle's top half rises like a fast-moving elevator. Its engine leaves a trail of wide, white light. The eagle soars skyward, silently faster and faster, 50 miles up, almost a mile a second. Aldrin glances sideways, nods, and grins. Into moon orbit, on our way. Higher still, Michael Collins peers through his sextant, still waiting. Where are they? He scans the sky and sees only blackness. The Columbia has been circling now for over 20 hours. From the far side of the moon, Collins cannot even radio back to people on Earth. He squints through the sextant's eyepiece again. There, a tiny blinking light in the darkness. He locks his computer on the distant speck tracking its approach. The eagle keeps climbing and climbing, up and up. It is like an intricate dance. Columbia leads, eagle follows, all at the speed of over 3,000 miles an hour. Now they fly in perfect formation, closer, closer. Collins punches hundreds of keystrokes to make the docking work. They touch, they connect. The capture latches snapped shut. A small door opens into a tunnel. Look who's here, welcome. Armstrong and Aldrin come floating through. It is the final orbit around the moon. Can a photo capture the wonder of what they've seen? Not likely. Still, the astronauts hover beside the Columbia's windows, taking pictures. The spacecraft accelerates. It curls around the moon's far edge. It is flung free like the tail end skater in a game of crack the whip. It soars into the emptiness of space. The astronauts look back with a sad, happy feeling. Hours go by. They can rest at last. They sleep, read, talk, play music. Sometimes they glimpse the slowly receding moon. Was it all a dream? No, we were there, we were there. But mostly their eyes are fixed on another place. Blue, white, light brown and shining below them. They want that now more than anything. A planet of oceans and rivers, of grass and green hills, a world of trees and family and friends. A place called Earth, fragile, beautiful, home. The end. I hope you enjoyed our read aloud of One Giant Leap. You can watch it again if you need help with answering your question for tonight's homework.
please remember that you should watch this video and answer your question if you want to uh, do your homework well, which I know you do. Thank you very much, and I will see you all tomorrow.